hello and welcome back to Data News of the Week, the video where we go through all little blibs and blobs of news stories that involve data that we squeeze into a single video. But before we go any further, just a quick reminder, I'm sure you can see it there on screen. That is right, next week it's going to be basically Synology router fever. We're going to be reviewing the device, we've got loads of different videos and articles coming up where we're bench testing, looking at the software, going into all manner of detail. I don't know why I'm showing you the tweet actually, hang on, because what we can do, it is very quick. Thank you very much, OBS. Do the job. Boom. There you go. This is the router. There it is on screen. We've already conducted most of our tests. Again, we've got something like 10 hours of different videos where we've done bench testing. I'm going to sort of chop it all down. But again, do stay tuned for that. We will be looking at the brand new router next week. It's not really news, but I do think it's worth touching on there. So let's chuck that down there and carry on with today's news. Uh, first story up is going to be regarding Wi-Fi 7. That's right, coming straight off the back of talking about the Wi-Fi 6 router from Synology. Qualcomm are talking about how they are now um, working towards their Wi-Fi 7 enabled processor there, the 1620 series. Now, Again, Wi-Fi 7 is bringing a myriad of different performance benefits there. Again, some of the performance they are talking about. I will be very surprised if we see any client devices getting anywhere close. That do bear in mind, even with Wi-Fi 6 or even Wi-Fi 5, whenever you hear people talking about the bandwidth and they start talking about how it's rated in this case for like 33 gigabits per second connectivity, uh, do bear in mind that, again, that is shared bandwidth. That's not going to be point to point. So uh, the big advantage is really to take on board, and I don't know if you saw that graphic there, is going to be just how many active full profile streams there can be. So if you see there uh, in the purple, you can see, and we talk about this a little bit in the review of that router over there, self-plug again, um, the 160 megahertz band there, which Wi-Fi 6 uh, and indeed 6E has access to, allows you to have that much larger spread across the frequency there. Um, and that means that in Wi-Fi 7, not only can you get even more active streams of that caliber at once, but then as you can see there at the red, it opens up the door to the 320 megahertz band there. So that means huge amounts of performance. So although that 33 gigabits per second that they're talking about isn't really going to be on the table to only one client user, you are going to be able to have several of these enormously high octane wide bandwidth kind of frequency bands in utilization there and again it's going to be known as 802.11be that's pretty much the consensus right now and again there's lots of different news articles about uh, Qualcomm's uh, kind of uh, detailed proposal on this controller that I recommend you check out because there are some other things about uh, anti-congestion measures and Wi-Fi 7 that are really worth your time and in looking into since this big announcement. Next up, the Backblaze stats are in. For those that aren't aware, Backblaze generally once every quarter uh, publish a report on the enormous number of hard drives in their, uh, you know, illustrious server arrays that they have at their disposal. It makes sense for an enormous cloud uh, platform for business and indeed some home users uh, for personal backups and the like. So while they've got all of these storage arrays, they generally publish reports on the performance of batches of these drives. Now, it has long since been the held opinion that the Backblaze stats are pretty much the, the most reliable form of semi-independent measures of drive failure and reliability because obviously brands themselves don't really want to publish that kind of information. But it's all very contextual because there isn't an equal measure. There isn't 5,000 of one drive, 5,000 of another, 5,000 of the other running side by side. Generally, the times overlap, the frequencies overlap, and therefore the stats, as useful as they can be, have to be taken in context. So why am I bringing up the Backblaze stats? Not the first time I brought it up on the news. A couple of reasons. One, they detail some of their most high-performing drives right now from each of the brands, uh, which if you scroll down to the bottom, is all kind of listed there with the highest-performing drives from each brand, such as in the Ultrastar model, it's the 12TBs, the Seagate, the 12TBs. They've really pulled it uh, together on these higher capacities, by the way, for a long while. The higher capacities were kind of the biggest blunder drives, but at the moment, the most comp the drives that they've got the highest confidence in right now, as far as a less than one percent failure, is detailed there. But what's really intriguing, and again, highly you know you know questionable, I think for a lot of people that would call this news, I bloody love 
the May the 4th Star Wars effort that has gone into this article. If you are even slightly a Star Wars fan, I strongly recommend you check out the sheer scale of Star Wars references in their most recent post. And I'm sure they're getting some credit for it. And they've gone into using their own measurement system for failure and protection. I hate seagulls. But still, nonetheless, I have to give them full respect for just the commitment to the bit that went into this arc, this article, which generally is an incredibly enterprise-level focused article, which has got a lovely bit of uh, Lucas Arts riffing there in the background. Back to Synology. It's kind of a Synology-heavy news this week with uh, the pretty much quite quiet announcement that Surveillance Station 9 is has now been fully released. I've looked around. There hasn't been too much noise made about this comparative to other things. But if you go to their beta section, no longer is Surveillance Station 9 in there. And indeed, if you go to their own platform there, you can see that Surveillance Station 9 has now been rolled out on there with all the advantages. If At the moment on their website, if you click that, it goes to the beta page which of course no longer exists, but it does detail a lot of the things like um, uh, privacy masking, a lot of the Google Maps support in Surveillance Station 9, an improved user interface and that control center there. And indeed, even if you look up modest NASes like the DS420, you can see that version 9 has now been listed as the one of the official compatible and downloadable versions of Surveillance Station 4 NAS. So again, yeah, Surveillance Station 9 is pretty much available. I do recommend you check it out. We kind of dabbled with it while it was in beta. We may revisit it very, very soon. Um, now DSM 7.1 has rolled out and it's one of the other features that's kind of been included in it. But I do recommend you check it out now. It's a stable release there and compared with Surveillance Station 8.2, you're not really missing out on anything and there's nothing but solid gain. And closing off today's news video, we can talk a little bit about a couple of little items, little upgrade items there. Firstly, um, Terra Master, alongside the release of several uh, over the last month or two of 2.5 gigabit Ethernet solutions in their uh, 423 series. Uh, they've rolled out a 2.5 to USB adapter. Now, they're not the first in the market to release something like this. Genuinely, adapters like this are becoming sort of 10 a penny. But there's not a lot of NAS brands rolling them out. Acer Store's got one. Uh, QNAP have got like a 5 gigabit Ethernet adapter. And now Terramata are rolling out their 2.5 GBE adapter alongside uh, their 2.5 gigabit Ethernet NAS solutions they're rolling out for their next generation. What's intriguing though is if, um, from what I understand speaking then, then they might be rolling out bundles and moreover that this adapter is pretty much going to be sold at cost. So again, they're really going all in on the 2.5 gigabit Ethernet train there with a lot of their solutions. And again, when you look at their most recent portfolio releases in the 423 series, they're all 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. Indeed, that 423 in the 2-bait um, 423, uh, two 423, they're rolling out with M2 NVMe slots. They're rolling out with double 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ports. They're rolling out with a new Celeron processor. They're really going in hard on that hardware. And with the latest revision of the TOS software, there's still some good stuff to look forward to. Now, carrying on with the subject of adapters, this isn't really news because we've covered it already, but this. The uh, 10 GBE adapter for the newer generation 2022 series Synology uh, NASes. We talked about it before with the 1522 and the RS422 that Synology is using uh, a new kind of 10 GBE adapter. And we finally got images of it uh, available. It is a tiny little adapter. It's taking advantage of the PCIe Gen 3 times 2 It's not, from what I can see, using uh, what I thought they might have. I thought they were going to go with an M2 to 10 GBE adapter, that one that was being uh, knocked around online. It looks like they are using standard class PCIe, uh, but horizontal injection. We've got a good image of the device there with that 10G connector and a little heatsink there on board. And we've got a top-down shot as well, showing that small heatsink there on top of it. So again, it's very proprietary using an exceedingly rare three times two connected there. Nothing, not even M2 SSDs are using that. Um, again, let me know your thoughts on this in the comments. Well, I've done a little comparison in the article you're seeing here. It's linked in the description below, detailing uh, the differences between it and the current uh, one port 10 GBE adapter available from Synology. So do check that out. But otherwise, this has been data news of the week if you've enjoyed it let me know in the comments click like if you've enjoyed it. i don't know who that is on the phone uh, click subscribe to learn more we do one of these every week we use the free advice section and otherwise have yourself a lovely weekend